All right, welcome back to the Flow Lab series. I'm going to update uh, the uh, that Mario Doggy Diamond game that I had on YouTube the last couple of years um, because our guy Ken, the creator of this awesome program, Flow Lab, has updated it and it is awesome. Um, he did that actually last summer, about a year ago, and I just hadn't been able to update. Um, so I'm going to do that today. Also, uh, the original videos I made uh, were when I first started going through it. So hopefully this will be a much more synthesized version. Uh, as always, those watching on YouTube or any students or teachers, um, feel free to drop me any questions on YouTube. I'm always happy to help out when I can. Uh, these videos are primarily used for my students in class. Uh, so some of the directions may not pertain to you. So just bear with me. All right, uh, class, if you will go, remember you're going through Google Classroom. And I have a link. Uh, first thing I want you to do is go ahead and play the Mario game for those on YouTube. I'll go ahead and post this as well. Uh, as always, when I create these games, I'm doing these quickly to just kind of uh, give my students uh, kind of like an overview on how to design or how to create. Uh, but the actual design, um, I, you know, I, I feel like that's probably best up to you professionals. I'm, I'm a little bit of a slacker when it comes to the design. Although I will say like just even to make this little mario character even though he looks pretty rough that still took some time uh, so i do the best i can with the very limited time that i have so i'm gonna go ahead and uh, pause the video here for a second but if you go ahead and go to the link and then when you uh, um you can play it um i think with my screencast um i have the free version so you can't hear it you'll hear a theme but go ahead and uh take 10 minutes and just uh just go through it and you'll see the kind of style of game that you'll be making. You won't be making this exact game. I'll give you the basics. You design it, and I want you to make it any way you want. You don't even need to do a Mario. We'll do this in class, uh, but you can modify it uh, as you see fit. It has multiple levels, uh, as you can see here. I've got multiple levels, so uh, go ahead and take 10 minutes. Uh, for those who are taking my class online, um, again, take 10 minutes, go through it and then uh, come back to the video. I'll have them time stamped down on YouTube and then just go to the next part of the video, okay? All right, now that you played the game for a little bit, uh, go ahead and click on the link in Google Classroom. It'll be the student login page, okay? It'll be your first initial and then your last name. So not my name, that's my name. I, I say that, but I had a couple of students putting my name in. So this is my, you know, my student account, just so that I can show you from a student perspective. So MRO and then UCHS for Union County High School. Everyone's password is one, two, three, four, five. And then go ahead and click sign in. All right. So this is um, where you can look up games on Flow Lab, which I highly advise. Uh, as you can see, just when you when you look at the games here, I mean these are obviously extremely well done. When I am showing you a game that I created, I'm basically showing it so that you can understand some of the basics and then move forward. Uh, I some of the work that's created on uh, the Flow Lab platform is amazing. Some of the work that I see um, in my class is absolutely amazing, and that's my goal: is to show you the basics and then hopefully you know you uh, uh, take it to that next step. I will say though, this sort of animation, this sort of design, it does take time. So uh, I obviously don't give homework, um, but a lot of students will go home because they're really enjoying it and uh, they'll continue to work on it. Um, if you will go to my games, uh, there's a tutorial, there's forums. Uh, so if you're wanting, again, if you're wanting to um, take your learning to the next level, the resources are here. Of course, there's YouTube. There's some uh, limited resources. I know uh, Ken, the owner of uh, Flow Lab, he uh, has released some updated uh, videos earlier in this year. Um, the videos that I'm recreating are based on the software update that occurred last summer. Uh, so between um, Mr. Ken always updating Flow Lab, uh, and then YouTube, and then your teacher resources, your human resources, I'm pretty sure you'll be able to get to where you need to get. All right, first thing you're going to want to do is hit this green new game. All right, ne uh, when you're in my class, uh, don't ever do the flow lab tutorial because it will, it'll, 
I mean, it's a tutorial, so it kind of locks you into place and, and shows you where it wants you to go. Well, we don't want that because if I'm trying to get you to go somewhere, it'll it'll lock out some of those features. So always click on when you're working with me. I click on empty project. All right, so right now you have this white square. So that white square, it's small. Like you, you know, some students will think that that is uh, their world. That's not their world. That's the camera, and we'll, we'll show you how to um, code all that later. So we're gonna want to change the camera view so that what essentially follows the character when it moves throughout the world. Now, if you make it too big, where my eyes have to look left and right, it kind of make me nauseous with jumping around because I'll have to go left and right, left and right, left and right. So you want to make that just right. Again, I'm going to give you some parameters to uh, make it bigger, smaller. But when you're designing your world, you, you're probably going to want to come back and maybe modify that to fit your world. All right. So first thing I want to do at the bottom here, click on settings. Go ahead and click uh, uh, set a name, new game. Do me a favor just right now until you come up with a name. Let's see. This is fall 2022. Go ahead and name that Fall 22 so that when I'm going back and I'm evaluating and grading your games, uh, I can find that easily. Especially if you make a bunch of games, like 7, 8, or games that you, you don't want, make sure you're deleting those games so that I can find your game uh, easier. Uh, later, when we publish these games, I mean, they're they're essentially published by me like in three weeks when we play it as a class. Uh, you can go back and change the title to um, whatever your game is. Uh, whatever the theme of your game is. You can go ahead and change the width just for right now to 18 and the height to like 12. Um, that's, a, that's a pretty good size. Again, um, you can always make that bigger. Maybe you're just going to do a soccer game where it's just one screen, not moving left or right. You can make that higher. Um, maybe you're going to make it to where you start at the bottom. You have you know, 10 seconds to get to the top of the screen uh, without touching something, without the uh, enemy getting to you. So there's different things. Depending on what kind of game you want to make, uh, you can modify it to meet your needs that way. But just for right now, I'm just going to do, you know, something, something kind of universal. A little longer, a little higher. All right, I'm going to go ahead and click OK. At the bottom here, I'm going to go ahead and click on Game Levels. So right now you have a white background screen. I've got Level 1. Uh, I'm just going to click on this white small square here to change the background anything I show you you can come back and uh, an update right now again I'm just showing you some of the basics and uh, whatever you choose now you don't have to keep you're not married to it you can always you can always modify it and you will modify it later so if you look I'm choosing somewhere in the color circle but that didn't change here in order for that to go from white, which is what it is, to blue, what I want it to be, I have to, I have to click inside this square. Do you see that? Changing the color over to the right. So I'm just going to keep it, uh, uh, change it to a blue, uh, you know, kind of like a background, like a sky. But let's say you're working in a dungeon or you're doing something uh, uh, different. Um, maybe you might have a gray background. All right, let's go ahead and make our first bright. Let's go ahead and make a quick ground level just so that we can create a ground. We're going to create a character. And then I'm going to the rest of the period to design. And then the next day tomorrow, you'll have the, uh, the entire period to, for you to start developing your world. Let's go ahead and get that first sprite in. You can click anywhere inside your color square. Click create. First thing you're going to want to do is underneath the word type. You're going to want to rename that ground. Under physics, we're going to keep that is solid. Now, if I'm going to create, uh, if I wanted that to move, I'd have to click as move. But right now, I want my ground to be stable. I don't want it to have any sort of bounce, fr friction. Everything's fine. The presets. I'm going to go back to properties. The behaviors is where I would begin to code if I wanted my wall to, let's say, my character walked over it and disappeared, and then I uh, walked over that one sprite, and maybe it was a trap door. This is where you would code all that, but we're not going to do anything like that. Click on Edit Sprite. Now over to your right, you have those basic color palette. To your left, you have the ability to um, change the color like we did with the background. All right, I'm just going to go ahead and click on 
uh, anything, you can go ahead and click on it. And go ahead and just draw me a smiley face. And that's just to show you that you can <coughs> uh, change the color. You can change, modify. You can, uh, uh, you know, increase the size. You can decrease the size. So where if you, you know, really want to get on that editing. Um, I do want to note uh, that right now you're seeing this. Like it's really close. It's really in your face. If you don't like what you've done, you can click undo, right? And so if I do a, these eyes here and the lips, but the eyes specifically, like you can see those eyes clearly. Just remember that right now, that's just one sprite. Your sprite isn't that big. Your sprite's like that big. So when you click on OK, yeah, you can see the, you can see the, like, you know, the smiley face. But you see how hard it is to see those eyes? I press play. It doesn't really show up that way, and that's and that's okay. That that that's actually good. That that hides our imperfections. Um, so just think about that when you're editing uh, in the future, okay? So, but I'm not going to use this. Obviously, I'm going to go to the bottom, and you you can modify and change. But for the purpose of the beginning parts of our lessons, click on browse. Click select category, upper right. And these are all the presets. Let's go ahead and click on blocks, pixel blocks. And you have different uh, preset blocks that were created. So if maybe you have something in the dungeon, made of stone. I'm just going to choose the first one. And then click OK in my bottom left. And you can always add to this. Maybe that brown isn't the kind of brown that you want, right? So you could always change that brown. Maybe you want something darker. Or you just wanted to add a couple more different dimensions to it. Uh, that kind of editing, it, it'll barely it'll barely show up. So feel free to explore. And you can see that's like, oh, that did kind of add just that little extra shading. Maybe a darker mud. Uh, just, you know, whatever. Um, that's kind of like week two type of stuff. Or the next day when, we have to, when I give you time to edit and really modify to make the world your own. All right, so now that you have that there, let's go ahead and clone this. So we're going to copy it. And I just want you to make one, like a level ground. So click on that and click clone. And then hold down your trigger button on the mouse and just drag that over. Now, if you'll see, I purposefully drug it out of the color square, right? Because I just want to remind you that that little color square, that's like this big. I mean, you, you, you can't make a game, you know, more technically you can but our game isn't going to be this big our, our game is you know a fully developed world so just make sure uh you're just put a couple outside of that color block uh, it's essentially your your camera um just as a reminder hey i have a never-ending supply of land world that i can I, I, i'm not just living inside this little square here okay all right one more thing uh for this video because i only have a 15 minute gap so i'm going to try to keep it under 15 we're going to do our second sprite. Let's do our character. Click anywhere inside your color square and click create. Now go ahead and rename this uh, player. You can rename that later uh, uh, if you have a name for your character. Go ahead and go to physics. Click movable. It will be affected by gravity. Now if you're maybe doing a balloon or something that would not just when you started the game would land on the ground or stay on the ground. You unclick that again. I'll be doing some individual tutorials throughout this semester so that you'll have something uh, to access uh, um, for just that specific thing that you're you're wondering about instead of waiting for future lessons. We'll still cover it in class, but in case anybody wants to go ahead for behaviors. Now you can build this code this from scratch at the bottom left. Go to behavior bundles. There we go. Go ahead and click on the run and jump. Double click inside your run and jump. Now this has already been uh, created for us by the program. All right, click on play and now move it around and you'll see the block goes left, right. Okay, and you see the parts of the code. Well, there we go. <laughs> I see the parts of the code lighting up. That's why I like this mode. Press play. This is essentially like your live editing mode. So whenever you're trying to figure out like, hey, why, why is this not working right? And you're you, you, you thinking, oh, I, I coded this correctly. Do it in this mode and you can see it live. Now, let's say I wanted to make this jump higher. Maybe your design, uh, that jump force isn't high enough. 
right? So I, I, whoa, that might be a little too high. All right, now that we have uh, that, just real quick, let's go ahead and click back on our sprite. And then go ahead and click on the edit sprite, our player sprite. Uh, again, you can manually create, like I did the uh, Mario or my attempt at creating Mario from scratch. Um, well, really a modification. If you will find the browse folder in your bottom right hand corner, click select category and then click chars short for characters pixel chars and again Ken has uh, done a great job creating these uh, this preset uh, character selection that you can modify from or get an idea from generate from uh, just make sure you're choosing the first character frame so when we do an animation later on uh, you're not choosing the second third so I always choose the first frame and any of the presets so I'm going ahead and uh, I'll uh, go ahead and do a pig this time and then click OK in your bottom left all right click OK and now put your character to the bottom press play and it, as you see it just slides almost like a you know sliding on ice or kind of hovering we're going to add an animation, uh, but for today, I want you to go ahead and uh, for the first, we're going to stop. I want you to take the rest of the class period and begin modifying, going through the program uh, with the time that we have left. Tomorrow, you're going to have the uh, complete time to uh, work on your work on your um, on your world, and then we'll do video two uh, the day after.